The LTTE, the Tamil Tigers, were a ruthless terror group responsible for thousands of deaths in Sri Lanka. But their crushing by Sri Lankan government forces at the end of the civil war in 2009 resulted in the death of nearly 40,000 people. Since then, the United Nations has said there was credible evidence of war crimes committed by both sides. This programme was the first to broadcast video evidence of executions of prisoners four years ago. Tonight, we have more mobile phone footage, independently authenticated, showing soldiers apparently abusing dead female fighters. Most of this is simply too shocking to show on television. When David Cameron visited Sri Lanka last year, he gave them until March the 2nd to complete their own investigation into allegations of war crimes. With that deadline now passed, Number 10 has told this programme they're supporting a new UN inquiry into human rights violations by both sides. A warning. This report by the documentary maker Callum McRae contains highly distressing images right from the start of death and sexual violence. It's nearly five years since the awful end of Sri Lanka's civil war, which saw the death of tens of thousands of Tamil civilians, mostly as a result of government shelling, though Tamil Tigers too stand accused of committing war crimes. But now, shocking new evidence has emerged of brutality and sexual violence by Sri Lankan government troops. <laughs> We don't know exactly when these events occurred at some point in the last two years of the war, but the behaviour of the soldiers, the obscenity of their actions and the fact that they filmed everything on mobile phones will cause international concern. Scattered in the clearing are the bodies of what appear to be Tamil Tiger rebels. The women, but not the men, have been stripped in a manner suggesting sexual assault, although many of these images are too graphic to show on television. At a couple of points, while soldiers laugh, acts of grotesque sexual violence are perpetrated on the bodies of one of the women. Only one of the soldiers seems to object. The video, which has been supplied to us by a Tamil group, the British Tamil Forum, has been independently authenticated by digital image analysis and by a forensic pathologist. And it provides yet more evidence suggesting a systemic culture of sexual violence and brutality amongst Sri Lankan troops. Dr Richard Shepherd is one of the UK's leading forensic pathologists. Well, the first thing to say looking at this video is that clearly these are real injuries in real people. This isn't a dramatic reconstruction. The thing that's noticeable, though, is they aren't the multiplicity of injuries you might expect to see in an ambush or a firefight. Two of the people have very significant head injuries which show all of the features that I would expect to see with high-velocity gunshot wounds. There's evidence of very significant sexual assaults and the pattern of injuries overall is such that I can't exclude the possibility of executions. The evidence of the apparently systematic execution and sexual violation of prisoners, first revealed on Channel 4 News over four years ago, has continued to emerge. Just three months ago, we obtained disturbing new evidence concerning the fate of Tamil Tiger presenter Issei Priya. Video footage proved that she was captured alive by government forces. Disorientated but unhurt, she is next seen stripped and executed. This latest footage couldn't have arrived at a worse time for the beleaguered government of Sri Lankan President Mahinda Rajapaksa, which faces growing criticism for failing to make any serious progress on investigating these crimes five years after they happened. It will also increase pressure on David Cameron to deliver on a promise he made last November should Sri Lanka continue in its failure to take effective action. Let me be very clear, if that investigation is not completed by March, then I will use our position on the UN Human Rights Council to work with the UN Human Rights Commissioner and call for a full, credible and independent international inquiry. 
Last week, when that March meeting of the Human Rights Council opened, Sri Lanka's External Affairs Minister Gial Pieris said that five years after these terrible events, they were still working on their investigation. And in a statement, he added that they'd been examining the Channel 4 video evidence for nearly a year. The identification of potential witnesses in the Channel 4 videos is currently in progress, he said. And once identified, they will be formally called as witnesses. He now has yet another incident to investigate and yet another set of witnesses to find. And the Human Rights Council will be under renewed pressure to delay no further in launching its own independent international inquiry. That report by Callum McRae. Well, the Sri Lanka High Commission sent us this response. Your allegations are such unmitigated and unsubstantiated rubbish that you make even gutter journalism appear to be Pulitzer Prize winning professionalism. It is a pity that your continuing propagandist vendetta against Sri Lanka only continues to undermine the process of reconciliation and healing that we have undertaken after a near three decade long terrorist war. Your crude journalism exposes both Callum and your calumny.